Mike Bickle started to get invitations to speak at various churches in St. Louis, starting in the spring of 1977. He visited a little church called Storefront Fellowship attended by a young blonde named Diane who loved the Lord. She and Mike were engaged on their first date and fell in love very quickly. The one thing that Mike required of Diane before agreeing to marry her was that she too had to agree with the commitment he had made to take care of his quadriplegic brother Pat. She was more than excited to do this. However, he still did not share with her all the details of his commitment to his father regarding Pat. A day later Diane went to Rosebud on a Sunday morning to meet her future husband's congregation and Pat. She was very nervous, because she was meeting everyone in Mike's world for the first time. Before the service Mike told his young friend Dave Schmitz, There's this girl that's coming, I think she's the one. When Diane arrived, she found Pat to be friendly and easy to talk to. Both Pat and Tom Casey thought she looked like the well-known and very beautiful singer, Olivia Newton-John. After worship, which consisted of Betty Coons leading on her guitar and Mike putting transparencies on the projector, he got up to speak. With great joy he said, I have something I have to share with everyone. I want to introduce Diane. She's my fiancé and will be getting married in six weeks. The whole congregation was dumbfounded by Mike's big announcement. They turned and stared at Diane like she was a space alien from the planet Mars. After this Tom Casey discovered his Subaru missing a lot. Mike, who was making the payments, borrowed it so he could visit Diane in St. Louis and speak at other churches there. Shortly after Diane and Mike started dating, Bob Beckett, the senior pastor of New Covenant Church in St. Louis, came to visit Mike and asked if he would teach at the youth services for high school and college kids on Saturday nights. So, Pat, Bob, Rick, Chip and the other Rick piled in the van and went to hear Mike preach on Saturday nights. Mike and Diane were married in August 1977, two months after their first date. Pastor Bob Beckett married them, and Pat was Mike's best man. Pat had fun during the ceremony, and he bought Mike and Diane a rather funny gag wedding gift. After the ceremony, while Mike and Diane Bickle were in the receiving line, the elders of the Rosebud congregation met with Pastor Beckett, and Mike's elders agreed to release Mike to go to New Covenant Fellowship. This was decided without Mike's awareness or input. When Mike and Diane returned from their honeymoon, they were informed that Mike was going to leave the upper room and go on staff as the young adult pastor at New Covenant Fellowship. This was sort of a relief to Diane. Mike had to be close to Pat, so he was going to have the two of them move into a loft above a condemned tavern a block away from the parsonage. Before they were married, Diane moved in and was trying to clean the place up. To her delight, God delivered her from the tavern through the transfer that Bob Beckett arranged, and the church in Rosebud found a pastor who was twice Mike's age and more Pentecostal than Mike. Because of Mike's job change during August, Pat, Tom, and all the other guys who lived at the parsonage dispersed. Pat and Sanders and Tom Casey moved back to Kansas City for a short season. By Labor Day in 1977, everyone was gone. Mike and Diane arrived in St. Louis in September. They moved into a brand new house in a new subdivision, and they lived there for about a year. When Mike began working at New Covenant, the house was the show house of the subdivision they lived in. The couple at times had up to 10 people, mostly guys, living with them at one time, as was his custom in Rosebud. For them it what New Testament Christianity was all about, community. The house was about a half mile from the large fellowship where Mike was now the young adult pastor. Mike shared a small office in the church with Tim Gustafson, who was a counselor within the fellowship. In December, Pat, Ann, and Tom Casey moved to St. Louis and moved in with Mike and Diane and the other guys. The house was on a cul-de-sac that was in a reasonably good neighborhood. Pat moved into the showroom of the house, which was a large comfortable room that used to be the garage. Mike, as was his custom, would always have Pat stay in the biggest room of whatever house that Mike and Diane lived in. This house was filled with the guys upstairs and Mike and Diane had a separate living area in the basement. 
Most of the guys from Rosebud had moved in with them. Rick Rober, Tom Casey, Bob Scott, and Chip Berry all lived upstairs. Mike also let others stay there too on a temporary basis. Jack Nicholson, Eric Kirchner, and Rick Hardy stayed there often. Diane ended up cooking for the whole household. Mike continued his habit of picking up people off the street. Many of these guys became Christians and started seeking God. Mike's boss and senior pastor of New Covenant Fellowship said he was really blessed by Mike's willingness to let people stay at his house and disciple them. According to Pat, there were times when both he and Mike had other challenges with people who stayed there. One lady who had some serious demonic or mental problems tried to kill herself numerous times by attempting to slit her wrists with a shick razor. Mike, with some other guys, cast demons out of her. Almost immediately she became normal, although she didn't immediately pursue Christianity.